days a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to the city of Bethlehem because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver the child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. That potent taste 
must kneel to pass his door. He comes with favor in his hand. Our empty souls to fill, to make a highway through the sand. storms be still It must have been quite astounding for an ordinary laborer 2,000 years ago to have an angel of the Lord appear to him in a dream with a very special message. 
How could it be this baby in my arms sleeping now so peacefully the son of God the angels said how could it be Lord I know not my own, not of my flesh, not of my bone, still Father, let this baby be the son of my love. Father, show me where I fit into this plan of yours. How could a man be father to the Son of God? Lord, for all my life I've been a simple carpenter. How can I raise a king? How can I raise a king? He seems so fair, his hands and feet so small. And when he cries, the sun just seems to disappear Ah, but when he laughs It shines again How could it be? Father, show me how I fit Into this plan of yours How could a man be father to The Son of God? Lord, for all my life I've been a simple carpenter. How can I raise a king? How can I raise a king? How could it be this baby in my arms? Sleeping now so peacefully. The Son of God angels said how could it be how could it be As you can see, our service that we're sharing with everybody today is a lot of wonderful music and one scripture reading and uh, a baby. So my reflection is pretty simple and it's just focused on one, one carol we haven't heard yet. It's a favorite of mine and the carol is, I Wander As I Wander. The story goes that in 1933, a fellow named John Jacob Niles was traveling through the Appalachian Mountains uh, recording folk songs of all different kinds. He came to the town of Murphy, North Carolina, and there was a little evangelistic group, apparently, that had been asked to leave town, leave the little town. So they're on the outskirts of town, but he stopped to see what they were going to do, and they had a little stand set up, <clears throat> and this young girl, apparently dressed kind of ragtag, what dress she had, simple country girl, got up on this little stand, and she began to sing this song. I wonder as I wander out under the sky how Jesus, the Savior, did come for to die. Well, Niles was apparently taken with the song right away. So when she was done, he took her aside and he asked her to sing it several times more so he could transcribe it. <clears throat> he paid her 25 cents for each time she sang it. And uh, he, he did his transcription. And he took it back with him, and, uh, and he published it in a whole collection he did of, of, of folk music. He gave her credit, and it became a very popular carol. It was, it's been recorded by uh, Julie Andrews, uh, 
uh, um, Barbara Streisand, Chanticleer, Linda Ronstadt, all kinds of folks. And it's in all kinds of hymnals and carol sheets uh, ever since uh, it came out in the 30s. I love it, I think, partly because of that melancholy mood and just to imagine this, this young Appalachian girl standing there having singing that just on her own a cappella. And it feels like country music. It feels like the blues. It feels like something that's coming out of people's life experience. And this was her experience as she sang it. But I'll confess that I also like it because it's got the word ornery in it. I love the word ornery. And when I uh, did a little research, apparently uh, some people debate on what ornery meant. That some folks say it just means ordinary, pronounced in an Appalachian fashion. So some carol sheets, some hymnals, just have for poor ordinary people like you and like I. I'm not buying it. I like ornery. Here's a definition of ornery. Having an irritable disposition, cantankerous, difficult to deal with or control, as in an ornery mule. My dad used to say the word ornery. He'd run into somebody during the day and he'd say that. It was a really ornery fellow. And I just really enjoy saying ornery. If you say it, it just sounds like you're ornery, like you're cantankerous. And I think because <clears throat> it has this beautiful melody, this beautiful message, but it's affirming <clears throat> that Jesus came for ornery people like you and like I. Not just the nice folks, not just everybody who's got everything together, but for us when we're feeling ornery and for folks that maybe most of the time are ornery. I became curious and I went through some, uh, some hymnals and carols and things looking for times when those hymns or carols describe uh, what, how life could be difficult. So here's just a sampling. I'm going to read some of these. O Come, O Come, Emmanuel has the, the words, Disperse the gloomy clouds of night and death's dark shadows put to flight. Bid envy, strife, warfare cease. Envy, strife, strife, warfare, this yearning to have that dealt with. Come thou long expected Jesus. From our fears and sin, release us. Times when we feel that's the main issue in our life, the main reality of our life. It came upon a midnight clear <clears throat> And still their heavenly music floats over all the weary world. Above its sad and lonely plains, they bend on hovering wing. And ever o'er its babble sounds, the blessed angels sing. Came upon a midnight clear, and ye beneath life's crushing load, whose forms are bending low, who will along the climbing way with pen painful steps and slow, or even joy to the world. No more let sin and sorrows grow. So I took that sampling of those phrases <clears throat> and I put them together and here's what you get if you collect them and you line them up. There are times when life can feel like we are living under gloomy clouds of night. Times when we can feel haunted by death's dark shadows. <clears throat> times when we feel we're having to deal with envy, strife, and warfare as well as fears and sin. The world can be a weary place as we make our way on sad and lonely plains, hearing all those different voices with their babble sounds. We can feel like we're, at times, we're under life's crushing load, makes our forms, our forms are bending low, and any progress we make is with painful steps and slow. Not exactly Christmas cheer, but life can be tough. There are times when we feel everything is going our way. There are times when we can feel downright ornery. But the message of Christmas is that God's gift is given to us when we're, everything is going our way and also when we're ornery. And to people that have it all together and to people that are ornery. That's what makes you wonder as you wander out under the sky. That's the gift of Christmas. That's the mystery of the love coming to us. And God does not love as we love. God loves as an emerald is green.
Amen. This concludes our Christmas service. We hope you've all enjoyed it. Ask you to just sing along with us this final, this, this final hymn, this final carol, which is expression of the key message of Christmas, joy to the world. Mm-hmm.